Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to RBL Bank's Q3 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. R. Subramanya Kumar, MD and CEO, RBL Bank. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for joining us for a discussion on our bank's financial results for the third quarter financial year 2024. We have uploaded the results along with the presentation on our website, and I hope you have had the chance to go through it in detail ahead of this call. I am, as always, joined on this call by Mr. Rajiv Ahuja, Bhubanesh Tara Shankar, our CFO, and other members of our management team, who along with me will address any questions that you have. First of all, I am happy to share with you that this quarter's operating performance has been in line with our guidance. I would like to highlight some of the key points from our performance this quarter. Advances grew 20% worldwide and 5% sequentially. Retail continues to grow faster given our focus on granularity. Similarly on deposits, small ticket deposits have grown 23% worldwide and 5% sequentially. So continued granular growth on both sides of the balance sheet and we continue to see good momentum for the same. The credit quality is generally holding well, and focus remains on ensuring better collection efficiencies and recoveries from slippages and return off cases. ROA and ROE expansion on track, and profitability continues to improve. I will separately explain the contingent provisioning on AIF and the resultant profitability ratios. While our bank has maintained its trajectory on ROA and ROE, the reported ROA and ROE has been reset due to adherence to the regulatory guidelines on AIF investments. Our growth in retail secured products and the expansion into the new geographies is also progressing well. In summary, our broad direction of deposits, of loan growth, of profitability, of asset quality, all of them are quite stable and as per our plan. Our initiatives on going from product focus to the customer focus is progressing well. The significant progress has been made on housing loan and business loans being originated through branches. Early success seen in savings accounts to cards, cards from branches, etc. We now also have our 100% subsidiary RBL FinServe also actively sourcing leads for products relevant to that market, namely the tractors and the liability accounts. We have also commenced the sourcing of two-wheeler loans as well as affordable housing loan and MSME. In our quest to grow secured retail advances, in this quarter, we have expanded our direct sourcing locations from 68 to 185 locations with 54 hubs for processing these advances. We plan to add another 51 locations in the next two quarters. Our plan of cross to leverage the customer's base by making the branch to anchor retail asset lead generation is picking up on advances. As I said earlier, our advances grew 20% YOY and 5% sequentially. Retail advances have grown at a faster pace than the overall advances at the rate of 33% YOY and 5% sequentially. The secured retail grew at 53% YOY and 13% QOQ. Our wholesale advances grew 6% YOY and 4% sequentially. Within this, the commercial banking, which is a sweet spot for us, has grown 19% YOY and 7% sequentially. We also saw expansion into new geographies in West and North India for our commercial banking operations during this quarter. We continue to focus on strategic product and client segments to grow our wholesale business. We went live with EBG, with NESL, and direct integration with the GST portal for tax payments. 
we are already live in tin 2.0 and expect to go live on ic gate which is the portal for customs in the coming quarter we believe these are the use cases which will benefit our customers and help us add to share in the customer wallet this will also more to help us in improving the current account balances our disposals across all our retail businesses x cards was approximately 6000 crore this quarter as compared to 5000 crore the previous quarter and 3400 crores in the same quarter last year clearly demonstrating our execution capability micro finance disposals were at 1989 crore this quarter flat sequentially we went a little slow in this quarter given the risk perception due to elections in the various states but we will look to ramp this up in q4 the book growth was flattish sequentially for the same reason we continue to see opportunities to monetize surplus psl which we generate in microfinance which we have been doing selectively housing saw a dispersal of approximately 1400 crore and secured business loans of approximately 585 crores these two products have been an important focus area for cross sell through our own branches as it one it reduces the cost of acquisition to improve the engagement with our liability base and three aids new liability customer acquisition over the next few months in the new sourcing locations we will focus on expanding the teams and we hope to start seeing the benefits in the new sourcing in the coming quarters on the business loans that is mortgage loans we saw a reduction sequentially as we ran down a pool of loans with the intent to have direct sourcing for better revenue we are now seeing a steady disbursal run rate of 585 crores on a quarterly basis and it will increase with the new locations which i said earlier our rural vehicle business tractors also crossed 400 crores in this quarter in disbursements which is the highest ever for this business on rural vehicle finance we today have an approximately 4% to 5% of the market share in the areas where we operate and we will continue to selectively expand the new states we have expanded from 9 to 12 states in this year the two wheeler businesses has started disbursals this quarter and we expect to see critical mass in coming quarters in cards we saw an issuance of 5.75 lakhs this quarter as part of our strategy we continue to focus on diversifying our sourcing engines and we expect to add few more partners in the coming weeks or month to further broaden our sourcing base we already doing approximately 20000 plus cards per month through direct sales and branches we have deployed 2000 plus dsts and they source directly from the market this will increase as we progress in a nutshell we continue to see broad based retail growth this quarter as well we have expanded our retail asset footprint from major states in this area in this year scaling of the retail advances will be achieved as planned with the digital platform created for this purpose with necessary sourcing risk underwriting and collection teams on the ground on deposits we saw a 13% vivoa growth in the overall deposits and a 3% sequential growth we as planned saw a 23% growth vivoa and 5% sequentially in deposits below 2 crores which now forms 45% of the total deposits our expectation is to continue increasing this proposition to get it, get this closer to 50% in the coming quarters we have focused consciously on the quality of sourcing making sure our cost of sourcing translates into large valid share of our customers while we continue to invest in the traditional banking by sourcing deposits through branches a large part of our effort is also directed towards acquiring accounts through cross sell and digital channels and partnership etc we will continue to drive incremental deposit growth from granular sources to fund our advances growth we are enabling 
the 800 BC branches of our subsidiary and other partners to source liabilities, that is savings account and TD. From the geographies where we don't have a presence and this will be executed through the digital journeys. We will be driving, sourcing from 1,300 touch points in total, including our own branch. On asset quality, on asset quality, the DNPA is flat QOQ at 3.12% and NNPA is 0.80%. The PCR is up YOY and marginally lower sequentially and stands at 75.1%. The net slippages during the quarter were 466 crores as against 375 crores last quarter. Of this, the net slippage is negative for the wholesale, signifying recoveries are higher than the new slippage. 97 pertains to microfinance, cards is 324 crores and other retail credit is 49 crores. Our net restructured advances stood at 0.63% down from 0.89% in Q2 FI24. On provisions, I need little extra attention on this particular paragraph. We took a total provision on advances of 435 crores in these quarters. We had recoveries from return of accounts of totaling 81 crores, so the net provision on advances therefore was at 354 crores. The credit cost for the quarter was 47 bits as compared to 54 bits in the last quarter on a like for like basis. Including the change in the policy we had done in the cards in Q2 FY24. Now separately, additional part, we took a provision of 115 crores on AIF as per the recent RBI circular. Our investments are primarily in, these AIF investments are primarily in venture debt funds and these are investments which have been made over years for building inroads into new age digital businesses. We have worked with these venture debt platforms very widely held for nearly 10 years and do not see any issue in realizing our principal and returns in the normal course. For context, against our investment value of 115 crore, we have NAV currently at 161 crore. I will reiterate that this provision is not against impairment and can be redeemed on profitability. In the context of AIF provision, our reported net profit was 233 crores, up by 11%. Since this AIF provision has been enforced with the clear direction of, uh, con I mean, <laughs> either redeem within 13 days or provide for, we have chosen an option for providing it fully. That's the reason that the VAT has come down. Without this AIF, clearly indicates the profitability of the organization emanating from the operations. Without AF related provision, our PAT would have been seen an increase of 53%, which is the actual increase, and 9% sequentially to 319 crores from 294 crores last year. Similarly, the ROAs without this provision were 1.03% this quarter up 1% from the same quarter last year. From the operations, we were able to achieve a PAT of 319 crores and an ROA of 1.03. However, it gets restated because of the AIF contingent provision which has been made by us. Our NII was up 21% YOY and 5% sequentially at 1546 crores. Other income was 778 crores this quarter, higher by 26% going over Y and 10% sequentially. The core fee income grew 23% going over Y and 7% sequentially to 729 crore. Our total income was up 23% going over Y and 7% sequentially at 2,323 crores. It can be observed that all the profitability parameters have been growing consistently as we projected earlier. Our NIM this quarter was at 24 bits YOY, 
up by 24 bits for your wife at 5.52%. We saw an increase of 10 bits in the cost of deposit this quarter. We saw marginally lower NIMS sequentially because of the lower dispersals in some of the asset businesses, namely microfinance. Despite the cost have risen across the market and are likely stickier for the longer, and conservatively we estimate our NIMS to be in the same range in Q4 as well. Our OPEX was up by 17% going over wide and 8% sequentially at 1,558 crores. Our cost income ratio was 67.1 this quarter against 66.5 in Q2. Increase was driven by the business acquisition cost, marketing spends, and on product and expansion of teams. We saw a healthy increase in the PPOP this quarter at 765 crores, up 35% and 5% sequentially. It can be observed that the PPOP is equivalent to, almost equivalent to that of our other income. Our total capital was 16.42% and our CET1 ratio was 14.58% as at December end as against 17.07% and 15.15% as of the last quarter end. We had a net impact of 57 bits in CET1 and 65 bits in total CR here this quarter. Taking into account the regulatory change in November, but had some capital efficiencies which we could take out in this quarter. Had it been a simple application of the regulatory changes, our impact on tier 1 and CR here would have been 65 bits and 75 bits respectively. However, due to efficiency in management of the balance sheet, we were able to reach the net of 57 bits in CET and 65 bits in total CRAR. On cross-sell technology and digital, we have made several shifts in our digital orchestration on customer journeys, payment infrastructure, channel availability and cross-sell. Various assets and liability journeys have been made live during this quarter, including savings account for credit card holders, co-origination of liability accounts with a few asset products, upgraded and personalized digital liability and savings account journeys. We are building our in-house UPI switch with the capacity to handle one crore plus transactions per day. This providing a big opportunity to increase our fee income. We have already introduced e-sign and e-stamp for our retail products, which has shown a good result in improving the customer experience Pioneering the innovation, we have become the first in the industry to provide WhatsApp-based OTP to our NR customers, enhancing our service delivery. I already spoke of our GST integration and EBG launches. The unified KYC, which we have spoken about in the past, has shown early success in facilitating coordinations of assets and liability products together. We continue to invest in our digital repertoire while exploring the symbiotic partnerships to leverage the digital public infrastructure and the newer initiatives such as ONDC, CBDC, account aggregator, etc. Lastly, on technology, we continue to drive operational efficiency, optimization of the cost with the consolidation of multiple systems into fewer advanced solutions and enhancing system availability. In summary, we continue to see steady growth and improving profitability and remain on track to achieve our metrics outlined. We expect to see a steady growth in advances in the range of 20% with the retail driving the credit expansion. This we believe will continue to be well supported by the granular deposit growth which will outpace the overall deposit growth. Our focus remains on scaling up the new retail asset products, continue to improve our retail liability franchise platformize products and services for our customers, have a customer-first approach, and most importantly, keep the customer services at the heart of everything we do. There is a high degree of motivation in our internal teams. The morale and the excitement of the team is leading to a better operating outcome. On capital, we have absorbed the regulatory direction of November. Our capital ratios continue to be healthy, and we believe we remain well capitalized for the growth in short and medium term. In last word, without that AFI 
provision which is a contingent nature our pat growth was 53% oy oy thank you very much we open the session for question and answers thank you very much sir we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one on the touchstone phone if you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles the first question is from the line of rikin shah from iifl please go ahead um thank you sir for the opportunity i had two questions first was on the credit card business uh, so we issued 5.75 lakh uh, new cards in the quarter uh, would you be able to give a sense of what would be the breakdown of this between uh, co branded partnership uh, internal sourcing either directly or via the dst and how do you see this kind of panning out over the medium term that's question number 1 and question number 2 is on asset quality uh of course the slippages have inched up but if you could provide some color as to what's driving the increase in the slippage between the segments because there have been uh, industry reports that mfi delinquencies have started moving up so is that more of a precursor to a uh, sustained increase or it's uh, kind of a one off in some of the states yeah uh, i'll just give a broad number of the credit cards then i'll ask our uh, team to mention about it our total sourcing of the card is just divided into one major partner and rest of the partners plus internal and the which include the branches and other partners and direct sourcing and uh, now it was uh, the major partner we were doing it to the tune of from year before around 85% of total sourcing was with them now that has come down to 65% So around 35% of it is being sourced by other sources, and we have around 20,000 plus is being done by the branches as well as by our DSTs on the floor. And the other details I'll ask our team to give it. Uh, so on this, on, so that is how we split. Uh, so Ricky, just to answer your question, this quarter we had about 5.7, 5.8 lakh cards. That's roughly 65, 35 uh, between Bajaj and non-Bajaj. Over the next uh, three six months, you will see us keep picking the share up from 35% uh, closer to 50. Uh, and another big one to add on a few partnerships we are looking to explore across various platforms and sectors so that's our broad strategy uh, so the idea would be that they are an important partner we want to continue growing with them but also to be more prudent we would like to deal with by looking at our own sourcing as well as expanding our co-brand so because we want to give a flavor of our co-brand that we are growing with yes so as uh, uh, as has been informed by mr kumar we have been working on de-risking one of the large co brand partner that we have uh, for last two quarters now uh, we have been reaching out to multiple consumer and and other co brand partners and we have got into some advanced stages of closure on that and between uh, next 30 35 days we will be announcing couple of partnerships uh, uh, you know uh, out uh, you know which will derive from the largest co brand partner that we have uh, in addition to that we are also augmenting our own uh, field sales force uh, currently we have uh, already taken it to about 2000 and uh, in another 3 to 6 months it will continuously grow at around 10 to 15% quarter on quarter uh, we are do- we have been doing about 25000 cards from this field sales force and it will continue to uh, be aimed to take it to about 25 to 30 percent of our total sourcing rest of the 25 to 30 percent sourcing would come from other co brand partners and the largest co brand partner that we have today will contribute to about anywhere between 40 to 50 percent of the sourcing coming to a second uh, part of the question that is with regard to the asset quality and uh, the credit cost what we have been selling it well within our gated range we don't see any change as far as that credit range is concerned however there was some impact of the lower recoveries but we are confident that it can be clawed back how we are saying is that the recovery percentage of the mfi got impacted in few states where there were elections now those states we have come back to that uh, collection efficiency of 99.41% which is in fact uh, all india average is 99.41 previously these states were under 99 they have also come back to 99.5 stage so we don't see any impact as we move forward in mfi and as far as the credit card is concerned we saw some small blips in same during same period we were able to claw back in the month of december 
and we are confident that going forward we will be able to maintain that momentum of higher efficiency in collection and we don't see more problem as we move forward thank you sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of jay from icici securities please go ahead Hi, good evening, uh, Mr. Kumar and team. Good evening. I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first is our yield this quarter was flat, or actually in few basis point has declined. I'm the sorry to interrupt, sir. Maybe request you to kindly use your handset, please. Your audio is not clear. Sure. Is this any better? Yes, sir. Please continue. Sure. Yeah. So, sir, the first question on the yield. Uh, so it looks like that yields have dropped or declined uh, marginally. Uh, you mentioned that there are few MFI disbursements were a little bit weaker or flattish, uh, but it looks like still we have done uh, fairly well in other of the higher yielding segments, right? Such as affordable housing, retail, uh, agri, etc. So, what could explain the you know uh, adverse yield movement? Is it competition or is it uh, something else? If you can uh, elaborate a bit. Yeah. Um, see, one of the reason what we saw was. Uh, the cost of deposit was higher by 10 bits okay we had some benefit of liquidity utilization but we were little prudent on some of our segments like microfinance given the state elections this is a flat issue which you really said about it uh, the nim uh, as supposed to be slightly higher in qoq for q4 given the dynamics around the deposit cost conservatively we would be able to maintain the nim in the same stage we we'll ask uh, our team to add up. So, 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 Jay, just to add, uh, while growth has been uh, very, very good, a large part of the growth in the quarter is also back-ended across some of these products. Uh, so, you should see this uh, yield improvement happen in the next quarter. So, a lot of the transaction will flow into Q4. Okay. Understood. And, <coughs> sir, our um, ROA improvement trajectory is, you know, in part is predicated on favorable name outcomes, right? So, uh, maybe given your uh, uh, stance and interest rate, maybe fourth quarter could be flattish, as you said. But how confident are you on improving NIMS uh, for FI25? There are two more, um, uh, I mean, like um, um, the pointers which will enable us to achieve this. One is the cost efficiency which we will be able to achieve it. That is one which will add up to that. The second is the provisioning part, which we are working on. Both will also add up to it. Now, today, the operating leverage has started. And you would have seen that uh, with just as a pointer, the operating profit for 12 months increased by 33%, whereas my advance grew by 20%. So that the resultant benefit will also flow into the next quarter, which will help us to achieve this number. And also, a new, and also a NIMS, uh, Jay, you should see... Uh, some positive. So, so, to, so to be very candid in the near term, given the dynamics of uh, cost of deposits and all of that, we are being conservative. But sustainably, as the mix shifts more and more to retail, you see a benefit come through. And uh, sir, on your deposit growth, right? So in 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 in, in the framework of FI26 vision, I mean, we have been doing fairly well in almost all of them, but the deposit growth is now. 13% odd, um, which is uh, slightly slower than loan growth. Uh, mm. What are the levers to accelerate the growth from here onwards, considering you know, the competition is going to be uh, competition is going to remain uh, competitive? Uh, mm. And in that context, do you sense any need to tweak the deposit rates? Also? Um, uh, we we don't um, find a reason for uh, tweaking the deposit rate right now because of the four or five points. First point is that we are increasing our ability to source the deposits from the current 500 plus branches to 1,300 touch points, which we have just started it with around 800 branches going to do that liability to our digital journey. Digital journey was hitherto not available. Now it is available. It is already put under pilot in few, uh, few 50, 60 odd branches. And we will be creating the liability desk at every touch points. That's one. The second, we have started um, uh, the cross sell in respect of our customer base off of the credit card, RVF. Already we have just launched a product called uh, Go. I mean, like uh, the Go account, which has been integrated with our LOS of our front-end tractor RVF finance, and the pilot has been successful. So, 
we are going to expand it to the asset team which is on the sales team uh, on the floor we have 1000 plus people working on the respective individual products like housing loan lab loan and rvf and things all these people will also be sourcing our sales front so by the third third would be that uh, the credit card which is said to be not having a journey now the journey for the credit card to cook originate when a uh, opening savings fund account and funding the account through that is also going to start. So there is a team which has been set up at the bank which we call it as a spawn branch or a virtual RM who the people who have been onboarded to these channels are going to be engaged uh, based on the strong analytics which the supply team is working on. So we start engaging. We saw some early uh, benefits also. Some of the customers who have uh, around 30-40% of the people will be inactive in their activation. We are reaching them out. We in the early signals through this virtual RM is that it's pretty positive and we are able to see that increase in the balance that is being maintained by these accounts. With all these uh, initiatives, we are confident that we'll be able to maintain our uh, uh, forecast, especially that uh, retail um, deposit less than 2 crores, which is uh, healthily growing at the rate of around 23-26%. Going forward, it will continue to go at that place. Right, sir. And, um, sir, in that context, uh, how could one look at LDR ratio? I mean, of course, there have been some chatter about, uh, you know, uh, 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 I mean, keeping the loan to deposit ratio in some prudential limit. We have, uh, you know, increased uh, the LDR steadily. And now, right, right now, we are at around 86 percent. How could uh, one look at LDR? Yeah. Uh, see, we have also we have uh, said in the initial in our forecast as well as in our vision document that we are comfortable in the CD ratio in the range of 83 to 85, which we will be able to maintain. However, I just want you to appreciate one fact. That is, the CD ratio is not to be seen only in the uh, credit time the deposit. You have to see from funding of the advances is the way I we look at it. We feel that refinance is also a, one of the very good method or uh, opportunity available for funding the advances, which we started leveraging. Is, which is definitely beneficial in terms of the cost also. If I try to merge the deposit as well as the refinance facility available to us, our CD ratio, the ratio, I will not call it a CD ratio, the ratio which we are measuring it now will drop down to 73%. So we feel with this combination and we have sufficient uh, headroom available, which is that to see our housing loan is increasing, but we have a headroom for getting a refinance, which we haven't not been able to uh, leverage or repick so far, which we will try to do that combination. It is for the purpose of effectively ensuring the cost of the funds and the cost of our deposit to be fed at a reasonable level. Yes, you that is we, we will look to keep the CD ratio at, in, in this ballpark only. Uh, and so, so on the margin now, uh, pretty much incremental advances will probably be funded by 1.1 or 1.2 times deposit. So that's probably how our uh, plan is in terms of growth. Last question. Last Clarification, this AIF investment, we have done the entire amount whatever was needed, right? We did not, yeah. be, I mean, we have taken the entire thing. That's correct. That's correct. We have done the entire one. Our entire investment is 120, out of which 115 is uh, was impacted, was impacted, by, was impacted by the circular. We provided for. Of course, it is not against any uh, impairment, and you know that it is redeemable, right? Uh, so the options are open. Yeah. And you will take a calculate. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Shah from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi, sir. So, again, the question on uh, uh, retail yields in particular, uh, they are down like 20 odd uh, uh, basis points. Uh, but I think structurally, the moment uh, towards uh, housing loans uh, that would pretty much continue away from say what we have seen with respect to the uh, MFI or even on the uh, business loan side. Uh, so then uh, should we see that maybe overall yield improvement might not be there going forward? Okay, would there be a fair chance maybe apart from because this quarter again there was decent growth on the commercial banking plus maybe uh, and maybe housing, which might continue as such. 
I'll just a couple of points, then I will ask Ramesh to give you the data points. The first one is that now we are just the housing loan all along, if you see that the focus was on prime housing loan where that yield was relatively lower. Now I just uh, told you in my uh, speech that we are expanding the 186, we have already put the people. There are 54 hubs underwriting schemes already, underwriting teams already. So these teams will be looking at uh, yes, lab. we call it a small lab whose average yield is much higher than that of a regular lab. And we are also focusing, for putting efforts on AHL. These two, we couldn't do that. Uh, so these two will be in a position to trigger our additional uh, yield on that. Then coming to the data points, we are going to. So Kunal, broadly, we'll be in the 17, 30, 17, 60 range. So you will see yo yo simply because there will be some interest reversal, there will be some mixed change that would have happened, the growth and advances would have been back in and all of that. So it will be a combination of a few things that will happen. Like we said earlier, we went a little slow in microfinance uh, just to be prudent given elections in a few states. Uh, so you will have these yo yo's, but broadly we should be in the 1750 handle, uh, give or take, in terms of retail yields on an ongoing basis. Okay, and we have not increased any rate. Was the risk rates? Has there been a pass on in any of the unsecured consumer credit? Or we only have two real. We only have two real unsecured businesses: cards mm -hmm. and microfinance. This quarter, yeah. we started disclosing uh, the breakup of personal loans to our card customers, which which we used to show earlier as card receivables. Uh, so that is purely a function of uh, how you onboard the customer, what is the behavior of the customer, and therefore uh, rates are what they are. We don't do real, any real open market sourcing for PL or any other unsecured product. So not so much of a rate change because of the regulation that's come through. Okay. And uh, this housing, if we look at it, overall disbursements are almost 1,400 odd crores. And uh, portfolio is also up. There is hardly any rundown which is there. So is there a bought out portfolio or something which is there? We did. In this quarter, we selectively bought a small portion uh, uh, through a bought portfolio. Uh, but yeah, on an ongoing basis, uh, we are now averaging close to 300 to 400 crores of uh, disbursal uh, on a monthly basis. And that run rate should continue. You will start seeing the shift happen more towards the smaller ticket uh, housing loans. We are today in the 50-60 crore monthly run rate. I think we start, our first benchmark will be to take it to 100 and then take it up from there. Sure. And a uh, couple of points on asset quality. Uh, so one is, if I hear you, till last time we were saying that our uh, credit cost will continue to be high and that might not be the lever on the ROA improvement. But now maybe you highlighted that there are efforts being made to just try to contain the credit cost, which can also help the ROAs as such. So maybe why is that the change in stance, what, what has been done? And second, if you can just provide the breakup of the gross slippages, because that has also gone up. So just want to look at it in terms of the incremental delta of 120, 130 crores. Where is it coming from? Yeah. Sorry, what is the last one, Kunal? Gross slippages. Breakup of the gross slippages, uh, 666, exactly, if I have to look at it. Uh, yeah, uh, so the delta of 120, 130 crores, where is it coming from, yeah? So in terms of gross, we had cards at uh, 370, we had microfinance at 100, retail uh, asset was uh, at 150, but within retail, I quarter, the net net slippage in retail is only about 50 crores. I'm sorry, uh, to interrupt, sir, your audio broke just now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, just repeat it again. Uh, uh, thank uh, you. So, I'll just repeat again. Uh, so, cards, we had yeah. about uh, 370, microfinance about 100. Retail assets, uh, we had a total of uh, approximately 150, but within that, uh, we also had recoveries and upgrades, so our net was yeah. much, much lower. Uh, so, that is the broad slip breakup of uh, slippages in this quarter. Incremental this 120, 130 crores uh, higher delta compared to last two quarters. This is yeah. coming particularly on the card, card. side? Card. Uh, some bit from card, some bit from uh, microfinance, some bit from retail asset. But like I said, the net slippage numbers are lower. The gross numbers uh, added up to approximately 130 across these three. Yeah, got it. And credit card, uh, credit cost maybe with the ROA lever. That's change in stance, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Kunal. Yeah. In, in Hello? No, I was just saying that uh, some change in stance in terms of credit cost supporting the ROA. The last time we have been highlighting that uh, we might not see too much of delta coming in credit cost uh, okay. given the 
product profile but i hear you that maybe you said there could be some yes, so there is uh, so so there are uh, focus programs being run uh, for example in microfinance and cards on recoveries and all of that uh, that we are rolling out essentially our two large uh, pools which generate uh, slippages are typically cards and microfinance so that is the larger focus within the rest of retail assets the idea is to uh, focus on upgrade recovery uh go out and get resolutions done look at property collaterals being liquidated and all of that uh so we have for example uh, historically had uh, npas in our business loan portfolio uh, there are efforts to go out and uh, do some liquidation and all of that at a far faster rate so we should have some benefit from that but in in our sense that will be more a near term uh, outcome that will happen sustainably for us it will be a combination of higher income uh, much better on cost and provisioning being largely range bound in the 1 and 1/2 to 2% range. Kunal is a two pronged uh, strategy. Number one is that arresting the slippage which I said that in the VC we see some green shoots in the month of December itself. Our collection efficiency in zero bucket has moved up from 99.41 that is one of the major indications saying that by end of the quarter we will not be able to do it. In cards also the recovery has just moved up from that uh, a couple of uh, percentage points and above that in the zero bucket. So we have first we arrested the first strategy of not allowing the things to slip out of hand. The second strategy was looking at the uh, tech Technical rate of account and NPS is two, two separate events, and we have rolled out a separate program. In fact, for microfinance, dedicated 240 plus people, 250 people have been put on the field only to attend to this uh, uh, technical rate of uh, recovery only. So we feel that with this uh, focus attention, the recovery will be higher, which will add up to um, what we have been asking for. It will be able to counter pressure. Second, if the slippage is arrested and you are able to get the recovery, then uh, meanwhile we have a very uh, uh, clear program of non discretionary non discriminatory settlement program which is going to accelerate it which will be said to it was on a selective basis now this will also add up to that what is settlement in those vintage accounts where getting the recovery beyond around 14 percent is going to be a challenge so that is also being rolled out and we are confident with all these three four five measures we'll be able to make a further one uh, vijay you want to add something first oh, as you rightly said initial bucket resolution rates are very good and our recoveries have also been good so this two pound strategy is helping us a lot in couple of products in cards and we strongly believe we will be able to achieve it yeah sure. okay thank you and all the best yeah thank you kumar thank you the next question is from the line of piran engineer from clsa please go ahead yeah hi uh, thanks for taking my question and congrats on the quarter Uh, most of my questions have been answered just a couple of clarifications firstly uh, on the news that uh, RBI gave only one year extension for your co-branded card with Bajaj they found some deficiency so can you just uh, clarify on what they were and what are the remedial actions uh, you all are taking yeah um, well while well, uh... I may not be able to comment about the regulatory discussions with them, but however, I can just give a clarity on the whole relationship what we have been enjoying with the BFL. First is that we have an agreement which is there for the five years, just signed around, uh, which is going to be in place up to December 2026. that's number one number two is that uh, as part of our entire uh, internally when we just evaluated it we have decided to have a de-risking of a dependency on one major partners so our strategy is to have multiple nbfcs multiple psus on board it and we are in a very advanced stage what uh, vikram also said initially that in uh, maybe a couple of weeks or a couple of months you will be able to you will hear because it is in the different stages of uh, integration and uh, and agreement uh, where we will be able to have multiple people partners coming up and the third very important thing as a strategy we have decided to move up to the level of 50 50 now we we were at 85 at the beginning of the year 85% were sourced through our major partner which moved down to 65% today and we want that to be taken to 50% in maybe in two quarters or so once these agreements are done that that is going to be done through apart from a relationship through others and we will also be in the position we have already put around 2000 plus bscs on the floor and all the branches have commenced to liberating it hitherto that was not being done we have around uh, uh, 2 million customers who are associated with the liability product we have a very good relationship with them and the conversion of those though will also in a position to add up to our numbers okay no so i i get that i am um, i appreciate the diversification strategy i just want to understand uh, like is it a small technical technological issue 
because let's say RBI does not renew it after one year, I know it is only going to be 40%, but it's still a large number. So just wanted to understand, I, I don't want details, I know it's confidential, but can you just give a sense of how difficult the challenges are to overcome, whatever RBI would have told you all to do? Are they mere technical upgrades or is there more to that? That is my only thing. No, it is a majorly an execution part of it. I am uh, pretty confident as a person who went deep into it to get it executed in a short while. When you say short while, okay. maybe a couple of quarters, yeah. Okay. And so secondly, uh, just did I hear it correctly that MFI collections were slightly lower in the election states? No, no, no. What we said as a prudent measure, we just wanted to hold back the disbursement. That is the reason that our disbursement has not been matching like what we projected at the beginning of the quarter. Why we did was that the election year, there may be a problem. So instead of focusing only on the disbursement and collection, we focus more on the collection. So these elections, there was a setback because in the collection number of days when the people are working there instead of 25 days, it got reduced around 15 to 20 days because of the various disruptions which happens in the villages. So we prudently withdrew our, uh, our ability to disperse. Now we are ramping up during this quarter. And what we have achieved in the month of December is that the full, full uh, efficiency has been achieved back in the collections. So it is around 99.41%, which you will definitely appreciate that is one of the... These are talking about entire portfolio. And the stage, what we are talking about, which was a little backward in collections, which was 99.1, has also moved up to 99.5. There are stages where we achieved even 99.6 and 99.7 in the zero bucket. Thank you. The next question is from the line of trouble from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, this is business acquisition cost uh, mentioned on slide number 17. What exactly is that? So it's a combination of all the costs we incur for sourcing new cards. Uh, sourcing new uh, tractor loans, home loans, uh, microfinance, all of those, they have done the business acquisition for us. Okay. And, and, and is there a possibility of efficiency getting generated out of it in the near term? So in the near term, what you will actually see is uh, the loans that we generated from these uh, uh, costs that we have incurred should contribute more to the income line. Incremental, this is purely a function of uh, what you want to source incrementally. So if you want to source a certain amount of tractors or a certain amount of cars, there is a certain cost that you incur. The benefit of that flows through the income, so therefore the income generation that happens is higher than the cost that you incur because you appreciate that most of these costs are incurred upfront by us uh, in terms of onboarding a customer, cost related to that and all of that. The benefit flows through in subsequent months. Okay. And an extended question will be, uh, OPEX to asset is around 5% currently. Uh, how do you see that trend going ahead? It will uh, start to calibrate down as we start increasing the share of our uh, own sourcing. Like, for example, in cars, we can spoke about uh, getting 30-40% sourcing done through his own sales teams. Uh, similarly, in uh, home loans and business loans, uh, Vijay and Kamal and Parag are working on generating from branches. Uh, we are also taking the help of RBS Pinsurf to generate leads from their own customer base and in their geographies. So the idea would be to pare down the cost of incremental asset sourcing through some of these levers uh, which we are working on. A lot of these have gone in, have gone live over the last few months. <coughs> that will give us a few months and quarters to start seeing the benefit flow through in terms of incremental share of sourcing. And, uh, a second question will be, uh, you mentioned about diversifying on the card side, so congratulations first on that. Uh, my question would be, uh, uh, just if I have to see uh, for example, a Bajaj, finance, uh, a Bajaj Finance card, how is the dynamic different versus your card which is getting sourced by us in respect of yield and the cost of acquisition? And also if you can mention that historically, how has the Bajaj customer asset quality has been versus the card which was sourced by us? Well, as we can answer it. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll take the first question. I, I think I'll break the question into three parts. Asset quality... Both the portfolios are almost range bound. Bajaj being credit tested at certain points in time have given about 50 basis points better performance uh, than the other portfolio. In terms of performance, our other side of the portfolio is uh, is more uh, mass affluent to affluent. 
and uh, the Bajaj portfolio is uh, more mass to mass affluent. So what we see is that uh, the spends and the ANR per customer on the other uh, ex Bajaj portfolio is almost two times. Uh, so if, if the uh, you know asset and uh, spend on a non on Bajaj customer is ten, it would be twenty on the other side. Therefore, if you were to see our uh, spend and asset mix is 40-60, whereas in our portfolio is, is uh, about 75-25. And uh, sourcing, as uh, we have covered earlier in the commentaries, that earlier it was 85-15, which now is about 35-65, and we are inching very close to take it over 50-50 in another, uh, you know, maybe two quarters max. Okay, so, uh, so this is the quantum of spend which the new card is coming, which is why we are able to reduce the share of Bajaj so quickly. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And on the yield side, so uh, what would you be doing on the co-branded side? And when it comes, when it becomes a your customer, how can that be different? So, please, uh, uh, say this question once again, please. So on the yield, yield and the cost side, so, so uh, when it is getting sourced from the jar, uh, how much uh, yeah, it can are also range bound. Uh, so, so. Uh, uh, as a percentage of exposure, yields are range bound. On a per customer basis, we clearly get uh, better uh, returns on a, on X Bajaj portfolio. Okay, X Bajaj is better with respect to ROA than uh, Bajaj customer. Uh, ROA would be slightly better with Bajaj customer, but it is largely range bound for both. Okay, okay, perfect. Thank yeah. you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Dama from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is on the AIS. So basically, if you can explain, like, you know, uh, what is this, uh, uh, you know, investment that we have made? Uh, is this basically investment that we have made over 10 years and how much of that basically is done in the last 10 months? You know, RBI uh, today also clearly said that they have been watching the AIS build up uh, uh, over the past 10 months. And their main contention, main concern was that uh, a lot of you know, lenders basically have uh, sold out their MPS to these EIFs and basically indirectly invested into uh, you know, the EIFs. Uh, so, how much of that basically uh, could be in our portfolio, uh, if you can talk about that, number one. Number two is that we will talk about that basically we will uh, look at redeeming uh, uh, these investments. So, for what is your view on, like, you know, how much time will it take for you to redeem this investment? And will that lead to uh, a complete write back of all these provisions that we have made in the, in the third quarter? Uh, if you can just, you know, throw some light on uh, particularly the air. Yeah, Anand, this is Rajiv. I'll take that. Uh, see, uh, we are largely in a venture debt platform, uh, and our relationship with them goes back almost 10 years. Uh, and uh, the idea is basically that uh, they are a premier uh, platform which which invests in uh, debt-oriented securities in the uh, new marketplaces of digital businesses. Many of them are some of the largest brands which you all know. Uh, we have been a partner uh, LP with them, and by the way, it's widely held. We don't have any, you know, in fact, our last investment was just under 5% of the entire uh, uh, funding they had raised. Uh, they have uh, raised uh, three uh, rounds of uh, the the funds for this purpose, and uh, obviously quite successful, very widely held, as I said. And uh, you know, we also have an independent business focused on the new economy group, and it's highly successful. Uh, we have done payments, uh, treasury, a little bit of lending, deposits, etc. And I would say one of the few banks which is deeply embedded in the entire ecosystem. So our endeavor to partner with them going back almost 10 years was with the idea that this will give us a window to understand this ecosystem because these guys bring tremendous relationship uh, with the VCs and the companies, and that has served us extremely well. Now, this guideline, this requirement of the RBI has a particular purpose, which is actually, I think, very clearly stated in the circular. However, the way the circular requires all regulated entities is to basically assess what is the common borrower, stroke investor, and the exposure we have. So unfortunately, whether your exposure is uh, kosher or not, it gets caught. So I can only confirm to you that 
over the three funds we've invested, we've received our money and a significant amount of return, which should be the case. And going forward, we don't anticipate anything other than the return of our principal plus the indicated range of return they have mentioned. To your second point on redemption, see, uh, what happens is as the fund life starts coming closer to its final date, the investments keep getting redeemed. So that is one normal uh, rate of redemption. I cannot sit and tell you exactly what will be the rate of redemption, but it keeps happening every quarter. Secondly, uh, obviously this, this circular came towards the end of December. You know, you know, everybody's been grappling with trying to understand what the meaning is. We took the view that let's provide first and then explore if we would like to do other options. This fund is in the money. The NAV is in the money. So once there is a little bit of a clarity in breathing space, I'm sure if we'd like to, we can get liquidity for our investments, in which case all the provision will be written back once we sell it. In any case, uh, Anand, uh, like I said, uh, we don't anticipate anything other than return. And uh, I think as Mr. Kumar was repeatedly mentioning, it is just a contingency to meet with the RBI guidelines, not at all in the nature of any impairment. I hope that addresses that. Uh, sure. So it's basically I understood it correctly that none of these investments that we have made is in a nature where basically we have tried to sell off our business assets to those AIFs and uh, indirectly basically we have invested. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and Anand, I'll just say one more thing. I mean, in many cases, we made the loan first and then independently they may have made the investment or vice versa. So there is no connect between this fund's practices and our own independent assessment. Unfortunately, like I said, uh, everything gets captured in the circular. Uh, the intention was very clear in the circular, but so we have to abide by it. Uh, from an economic perspective, we don't see any problem whatsoever. Sure. So that's very helpful. Uh, do you expect any of these reversals happening in next quarter? And if basically, you know, if you can quantify or maybe over next one year as such? Like I said, I cannot, uh, I can only say we are not perturbed one bit. We wanted to play it very, very straight uh, and just go by and comply with the guideline. We'll see what happens. Like I said, this has barely been two, three weeks for us, uh, you know, at end of the year, beginning of the year, we had other things to do. Uh, there is a lot of options on the table. We'll take we'll take it with a little breathing space and then, then decide what to do. Uh, second question is on uh, you know, on on the uh, corporate uh, NP pool that we have. So uh, one basically any any lumpy recovery that you expect uh, in in the uh, next two to three quarters. Number no, one. no, no, uh, Anand, I, 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 it is a, it is it is a work in progress. Uh, there are, uh, see, if you look at it, last time the recovery was much higher than the slippage, which we have been able to do it for the last three or four quarters consistently like that. The efforts are on. There are certain accounts where it is in advanced stages of getting a realization. There are some advantages the efforts have been started, right? It's going on. Because the portfolio is around the thousand five hundred to thousand. Yeah. So basically, even during the correct quarter, we have had some recovery from return of accounts, and that we tend to show it into the provision line item. But you know, uh, uh, there are some banks basically who show it into the other income line. Uh, so is there any more that you know, change that uh, accounting as well? Sorry, go ahead. Please go ahead. Sorry, you missed what you said. No, we missed it. Can you repeat it again? So basically, recovery from return of accounts. Basically, we have uh, uh, taken it out of from the provision line item. Whereas, uh, you know, typically we are seeing that some banks show it into the other income. Uh, so, yes. uh, any change that we want to do even on that? No, so, if I remember right, the circular which came from RBI has first asked banks to take it from the provision line. And then there was a dispensation. So, I know a few banks who have done it on the provision line and some who have done it in the income line. This has been our practice for the last three or four years since the circular change. I think we we'll continue with this process only. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rakesh Kumar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, hi. Thanks, sir. Hi. So can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes Rakesh. Yeah. So the question was with regards to, uh, you know, the sale of uh, credit card portfolio of around uh, 793 crore. 
uh, where the loan account number is closed around 1.5 lakhs, as we have uh, given in our uh, uh, result note. So, uh, so what was the provision that we were holding? Because I think we have reversed uh, whatever we realized. So, if you can, uh, you know, throw some light on that, sir. Yeah, yeah. See, first of all, I wanted to say that our provision uh, thing is 120 days. We provide 100 percent of the outstanding. Previously it was 180, now it is 180, 120. The entire portfolio, what we saw was a two years of vintage, and they have been 100 percent provided for. And we made a complete evaluation and calculation. It is going to be recovered over a period of two, three years. Let us assume the amount of collection charges are. Uh, Spend will make on that collection will be higher than that of the upfront money what you are getting it. Hence, we decided to prudently move towards that to selling things and closing it. Okay, so uh, uh, and uh, so uh, other thing was that you know considering this uh, you know total retail loan disbursement that uh, you know we have seen this quarter and uh, out of that the disbursement to the you know secured retail loan. So, is there any like this is just a you know opportunistic uh, you know move uh, in the business, uh, or uh, is there any thought that you know uh, you know we have to go more into the secure retail side? So, if you can explain, sir. Yeah. See, as a strategy, we explained earlier in the vision document. Also, we said that we will be in a position to expand the run rate of growth of the secured portfolio will be faster and higher when compared to the run rate of growth of your other unsecured product. That is a given. So, when you just make that beginning, and the lot of products were launched in the last uh, nine to twelve months period, and those are started scaling. For example, the tractor was done a couple of years before, and they just started scaling. Housing loan and um, uh, and the lap loan, which we call it as in the mortgage loans, have been uh, uh, commenced with the AHL and THL and small lap and other things. They have started uh, scaling in the last two quarters. In respect of other loans, the two-wheeler we have just commenced it, and uh, the four-wheeler used to car also we commenced it. So they will start scaling after a quarter or so. So in nutshell, the strategy is that in our entire credit growth, there will be a growth of 20% straight upfront. It will be 20 plus as we move forward next year and next year. And within that, the retail growth will be around 25%. And within that, the credit of the secured credit growth will be somewhere around 25 to 30%. So that is how exactly it has been planned out, and uh, we will be achieving it as per the plan of action. We have been achieving it, and we will continue to achieve it. Got it. Got it. So just coming back to the first question, so the loan that we have, loan accounts that we have sold, the credit card. Uh, this is to some bank, some uh, private bank we have sold, correct? No, we sold the ARC, no? Huh? I think it is, uh, yeah, Kotak, 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 Kotak. Correct. Sure, 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 sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubranshu Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, three questions on the credit card portfolio. First one is when we land a credit card to a Bajaj Finance customer, what is the ownership of that customer? Uh, so does he permanently become our customer and Bajaj Finance cannot give him any kind of its products, whether it is credit or non-credit? Or uh, is it a transient uh, movement? Bajaj can also land him any credit or non-credit product. We can also land him any credit or non-credit product, whether it's savings account or any life insurance or another personal loan, for example. That's the first. Second question is, uh, the uh, present set of regulations uh, uh, say that the uh, originator cannot be the collection agency. So in the co-brand uh, of Bajaj Finance, is Bajaj Finance or any of its subsidiaries or any of its parents' subsidiaries doing the collections for that particular portfolio? That's the second. And the third question is, uh, uh, what is the percentage of less than 25,000 credit limit credit cards in the entire credit card portfolio? Thanks. So one or two points I'll clarify. The remaining data I'll ask Vikram to do it. First one is when the customer is acquired, it comes into the balance sheet of the bank and he becomes a customer of the bank, right? So that, is a, that is a major point. So once he is a customer of your bank, the rest of the things are left to the bank for process and natural and everything. So I just park it that. The second will come to that collection agency. Previously, it was a part of the BFL. Now, it is not with the BFL. As a uh, transition, it is with the, uh, if you look at it, there is a, there, there is the arm's length 
um, relationship as well as the current event, which is current company, which is this doing the collection. Ultimately, the collection is not by the company; it is with the agencies below that. We are around 1,300 plus agencies, and all these agencies are independent of it, and it is being managed by the bank. So the moment the agencies are managed, allocation is taking by the by the bank. The question of interpreting in another way may not arise. This is what I leave it. As regarding that point and other things, I want uh, because we can give the data. Third point. Uh, so, so as, as Mr. Kumar has uh, mentioned, the customer once he takes the card from RBL Bank from any of the channel, whether co-brand or non-co-brand, becomes the customer of the bank. We can sell anything to that customer. Uh, and so does can uh, the co-brand entity. Uh, so uh, there are no uh, because it, it, it's a it's an open market customer. Anyone can reach it, uh, reach out to him and sell whatever they deem fit. Second thing, uh, second question that you have asked is that how many customers are less than 25,000 credit limit? That would be less than 5% of the portfolio, maybe in range of 2 to 3%. And that is also uh, the test programs that we have done to test certain segments is, is where uh, this number would lie. Like most of our portfolio would be about 25,000. Right. So if I can just squeeze in one last question, who is doing the collections of the Bajaj Finance portfolio right now? What is that entity's name? Yeah. So, so okay. collections are done by the agencies, and uh, the agencies are uh, typically told by Mr. Kumar. They are managed by us. Our uh, we control the agencies, and uh, the field agencies goes and collects for the customers as well. Understood. Thanks. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. We now conclude the Q and A session. If you have any further questions. Please contact RBL Bank Limited via email at ir at rblbank.com. I repeat, ir at rblbank.com. On behalf of RBL Bank Limited, we thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you, members of the management. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.